Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. So today we are going to understand very important topic. This is about protecting our system from overload, protecting our system from abuse. So these three key terms are there: rate limiting, throttling, load setting. We are going to understand in detail. So first, let's see what's there in the agenda in detail. So problem statement. We are going to define that how overloading and abuse cases can happen. what are the possible solutions that we can uh, think of uh, if we i do not know what what brute force way what is that way that i can apply for the possible solutions we will introduce rate limiting request throttling load setting so first we will understand we will go step by step problem statement possible solution then we will we will, we will uh, keep we will introduce specific topics rate limiting request load setting how they come into picture then we will see the real life industry example where these three techniques are going to be used to prevent the actual cases of the overload and uh, uh, abuse cases wherever they are happening here i have shown you a very simplistic high level architecture where you can see this user app service is there hypothetical application where i have a user registration app this registration app is going to take care of the registration of entire population of world kind of biometric biometric authentication so that i can have a single identity server for everyone and this user app server uh, it is it is running on a very very big server it has uh, uh, so even if no matter how much how big it is there will always be certain limitations that what it can handle so by uh, by performing uh, internal testing load testing i have come up with the number that uh, how much it can handle so a hypothetical number 10000 user create request per minute so this is the limit that i have like uh, uh, if if our service is getting more than this request our server won't be able to handle this one okay so now let's to coming to the uh, uh, actual scenario so clients users when i make this server online i'll educate everyone that you come here and register it users will come and call uh, like on the application side they will call the registration uh, uh, they will request for the registration server will store that information in the databases and perform the validation whatever is applicable and respond to the user happy scenario happy world things will go on now let's say we are talking about the user base throughout the world let's say uh, users from india are very active and they are actively registering on this one so very uh, uh, like uh, uh, very soon they will be able to consume this entire capacity like 10000 user create request per minute right uh, so what will happen so when all the uh, quota like this 1 minute 10000 request is like taken by the india users only then what will happen to the other geographies all the resources are consumed by one country so they won't be able to make the request the server will be responding with error because it is not able to handle that load and our server is getting more than expected request so how to handle this case so this is the one case of the overload now come to the second case when there are malicious actors out there right uh, they intentionally want to overload your server on as from a single machine they can write a script and uh, concurrently they can keep calling the your application to uh, create some dummy users so very soon 10 thousand create request per minute or more than this one 100000 request per minute they can create and bombard your server so your server will be getting the request uh, from some bot actual users will be impacted so when actual request will be coming they won't be able to serve properly this is the yet another case of the abuse so how to handle these cases right so that it our server is not uh, overloaded at one time another time it is not uh, being targeted by some sort of attacker so how we can prevent it so one way that we can like i know what our user limit is there right so i can ask the client application that is interacting with our user app server here i can put something in here uh put some server some service here that can take the task of rate limiting here we are just talking about rate limiting right so any point of time uh, you see this limit exceeding you deny that request so what is the criteria of that limiting 
first we saw that first the geography first use case was that we saw that we want to limit like our, our server is able to handle 10k right so i can i can um I can put quota for every country, every every geography that that is there. So for India, thousand requests for US, thousand, and for other countries respectively, these limits are there. So if for India there will be dedicated quota, after that they have to wait for the limit to be available for the next minute. So in this way, uh, our server will be available uniformly for all the user. All right. Second case, the abusive case. Another rate limiting condition can I have? based on the ip address based on the user like user will be using some sort of uh, identification right uh, whether email or mobile number so i'm getting the request from the same mobile number or from the same email id i can prevent that user from there only like only one user is allowed only two user is allowed or from a single machine single ip address only this number of requests are allowed so i can i can prevent the uh i can prevent my server from overloading by this one, by this way right another way is there uh when uh, instead of putting the rate limiting in here i can i, I do not need this uh, if i do not want to put the rate limiting here i can have like this user app server this uh the server where it is running it will have all other functionalities as as well right it will have get endpoint delete update other analytics server also running on some sort of bad job will also be requesting the data from the server so what will happen at the time of this this short of load uh, kind of um, if i talk about e-commerce application there are big billion days in this case also i have i have i'm i'm organizing a event where i'm expecting that there will be huge load on my server so so what is what is most important tasks for this server to perform that is registering the user i can pause other services for that moment of time but i do not want to disturb the most important functionality that is user's registration so load shedding that another term is there uh, so it talks about like limiting uh, like stopping other less priority tasks when highest priority tasks are ongoing okay so this is the two way that we can prevent our server from overloading and serving the actual request in a proper way whatever i explained i i'll give a text uh, like i'll walk you through the slide their purpose their strategy and their use case keep a pause on this slide and read this through uh, one by one to get a more proper understanding so rate limiting what is the purpose of this one so the rate limiting is a mechanism used to control the rate of incoming request or data flow to a system or a service it sets limit on the number of request or data packets allowed within a certain time interval so that limiting can be on any uh, criteria like user ip address uh, or geography and uh, another uh, it can be another specific business logic that that is applicable to your use case that how you want to limit the user coming from coming to your server second point the strategy rate limiting regulates the rate of incoming traffic by enforcing restriction on the number of requests allowed per unit of time exceeding this rate results in request being rejected delayed or processed differently what is the use case rate limiting is commonly used to prevent system overload protect against abuse ensure fair resource allocation and maintain system performance within specified limits it's often apl applied in apis web server and network services yes request throttling that is something uh, you will see very similar to rate limiting but there is a slight difference here i'll, I'll show you that as well so the purpose request throttling is a strategy used to limit the number of requests a client can make to a system or service within a within a certain time frame strategy uh, throttling controls the rate of incoming requests by enforcing limit on the frequency or concurrency of requests made by client concurrent request uh, how the client is making that it aims to prevent client from overwhelming the system by restricting the speed at which requests are sent or processed use case request throttling is useful in scenarios where you want to prevent individual clients or users from consuming too many resources exceeding their allocated quotas or causing denial of service attacks it is commonly used in apis web services distributed system 
to ensure fair usage and maintain system stability so use cases uh, if you talk about uh, we talk about use cases purpose is same uh, of the request throttling and limiting also so what is where the difference is so let's let's take an example in this uh, let's say our client application is there in here uh, so i have i have put this limit uh, rate limiting application is there rate limiting i have applied in here uh, in front of my my server so i will allocate the i will allocate the quota for each user based on the conditions that i have so if particular user is uh, exceeding that limit so that that request won't reach reach the server at all okay it will return from there only so rate limiting it's short of on the client side it will know that i'm exceeding and i have to wait uh, i have to put some sort of retry mechanism uh, so that on on the next slot i have available limit if i talk about the throttling throttling request uh, when client is making it comes to the server and server decides whether to throttle that or not so it's it's like a uh, uh, actively so in case of rate limiting client is aware that what i have to call in case of throttling client is sort of not aware but it will make the call to the server and server will respond uh, that request is being throttled so based on that response it can uh, it can ask to retry that one so in uh, so they both of them actually rate limiting and throttling uh, they are very similar to each other slight difference is there that how they are handled and how the industry is using that one when i explain you the real time example in a while that will make the difference more clear so but the thing is like rate limiting is more on the client side throttling is more on the like i have done the action now i have how i want to handle this one right so this is this is more on that side so now the last part that is load setting which is entirely different from uh, how how the entirely different from uh, throttling and request uh, like rate limiting so so purpose load setting is a strategy used to prioritize and manage system resources during periods of high demand or overload by intentionally dropping or delaying less critical tasks or request strategy load setting involves sacrificing less important work to ensure proper functioning of critical task or to prevent system failure it selectively drops or delays rest less critical tasks or requests when the system is under heavy load to maintain overall system stability use case load setting is commonly used in distributed system real time processing systems and networking devices to handle sudden spikes in traffic prevent system overload and prioritize critical tasks or services helps maintain system responsive and prevents cascading failures during peak loads so i hope the difference is clear among all the three now let's see the real time real life industry example so what i mean by real time so you we all know uh, the twitter has certain limits put how many tweets we can put in so what are those numbers so post tweets there are 50 request 24 hour window per user is there and overall 30 day limit is the 1500 so in 24 hour a single user can request mac a single user can post maximum 50 tweets same is the limit on the delete and get user me on this one <coughs> okay so rate limits and all that so this information you can get how you how you can perform actions on the twitter application okay now coming to the coming to the throttling part if you have used dynamo db they have put some limit around that so dynamo db tables are there they are in two modes on demand and provisioned mode so per table 40000 read request units and 40000 write request units are there on the provisioned one 40000 read capacity units and 40000 write capacity units so these are the limits that are put on the per table basis on uh, like uh, they they are not on the user basis or something like you have created a table so you can perform these number of read and these number of write within certain amount of time if it is exceeding the service will be throttled you will be getting throttling exception so those throttled request have to be retried if you are using aws sdk uh, to 
like their internal one that retry is implemented uh, internally uh, that does automatically this one but still if that is not working entirely it will fail the request so this is how throttling is implemented with dynamo aws dynamo db now last part coming to the load setting where we have load setting is there in all the system i think but most importantly what we can see is when we have uh, when we have live streaming of the cricket football we see huge huge spike in that particular application which is streaming the service which is which is streaming that uh, uh, that cricket live hotstar is a very good example for that so what it does hotstar has some other function like they have movies they have other shows also running at the same time uploading all sort of so but that live streaming of cricket football any other sport is for a particular moment of time so they uh, what they do at that time of time when the cricket or football is streaming their highest priority task is that streaming so if their resource gets choked or is getting overload what they will decide they will decide to you stop or keep a hold on other services like other shows movies and all that uh, but keep our live streaming uh, going that should not be impacted so that's one example of the load setting that i can i can keep my other uh, other services on hold where while my critical functionality is going on another real time example is if you have used ircTC to reserve to do the reservations if you see that window when tatkal uh tatkal reservation is opening uh, like morning time 10 11 11 to 12 at that time i cannot check the pnr status i cannot check my last booking and reservations Be why because at that time window one hour two hour window there is high load on the booking request so they want to stop other things this is yet another example so you can if you notice you can see many more examples around this one so that's all i wanted to explain in this video about uh, how we how load comes how abuse comes and how we can prevent it so there is more around rate limiting and all that so if we talk about low label exam low uh, like uh, how it is implemented what are the different strategies so token bucket different algorithms are there so we will be talking about in upcoming videos around this one also in the system design series so uh, what all is there so this is the page that i have created uh, and tried to document the different topics that that is must that is must for all senior software engineers and who are really who really care about the architecture so this is what we have covered as of now i will be uh, like uh, uh, coming up with all the topics in coming time so we'll be updating the details so this video that i have going to upload on the youtube i'll, I'll update the link in here also other links also you will be getting in here by the time okay i hope you found this useful if so please subscribe the channel like it and share it with your friends i'll see you in the next video till then take care bye bye